Hey guys, Libby News here, and today I'm going to be discussing this new article regarding Danganronpa S that was released recently by Famitsu. And also a huge shout out to Kamun Kotino for translating it. I'll be linking their account and post in the description if you'd like to read the article yourself. But anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the video. There is a lot of good stuff to talk about in this article. So it starts out by describing the general information, including the setting and the gameplay for the game. It states, a summer camp is starting in Jabberwock Island. Danganronpa S, the latest entry on the series, is a board game based on the talent cultivation program bonus mode in v3 take a look at how your tropical island camp will flow and what you should expect to see in it the training camp dice game is set in jabberwock island we have 60 playable characters trying to improve their talents through leveling and battling aside from the expected super high school level students from all the numbered games major characters from the spin-off ultra despair girls are also in this game something everyone has been wondering about is how many characters are going to actually be playable in this game in my last video i mentioned that epton revealed 62 character stands dressed in their beach attire. And there was also this tweet by Spike Chunsoft's Japanese Twitter account stating that there is 67 characters so far. So I'm assuming here that it means like 60-ish characters. Also, I saw some of you guys point out that the five characters missing from the Epton listing are likely the Monocubs, since the numbers add up and we've already seen them in some Danganronpa S CGs. Next, it says, step one, leveling up on the board. Danganronpa S is composed of three main aspects, the level up board game, the battles, and the shop. The main part is the board game. There you spend 50 days or 50 turns, raising your character in a Jafferwalk Island camp. A character can evolve by landing on a growth space or experience a variety of events and interactions with other characters. They can also get stronger by learning skills and obtaining equipment. Then it says, step two, taking your party to the Tower of Despair. Your goal in raising your characters is to make them clear all 200 floors of the Tower of Despair, which has been plagued with Monokuma monsters. In the tower, you build up a party of up to four characters and challenge waves of enemies. Clearing the missions established in each battle earns you mana coins for you to exchange for rewards in the school shop. Step three, recruiting new allies in the school shop. You can use the mana coins earned in battle on the mana mana machine. Use a mana coin to get the machine rolling and gain new characters and items you can use to further power them up. Jabberwock Island is composed of one main island and five others connected by bridges, but it'd be rather difficult to explore all of them from the get-go. The rarer characters you can recruit in the shop will evolve faster and move more efficiently, allowing you to go through all the islands. So all the stuff I talked about in my analysis video, I feel like was confirmed here. Of course, the board game is very similar to Talent Development Plan from B3, and it seems like this game is in fact a combination of that one along with Salmon Mode and Monokuma's Despair Dungeon from B3 too. It seems like specifically the Tower of Despair will be inspired by Monokuma's Despair Dungeon, and in a scene in the Famitsu article with Ishimaru and Kamida, they discuss hope fragments and how that's supposedly supposed to be the purpose of the training camp, which is very similar to Salmon Mode, which is the side game where you get to see all the free time events for V3. It also can confirms here that we'll be unlocking characters through the Mono Mono machine, just like in Talent Development Plan. I'm thinking the starter characters will be these four that we see on the Famitsu cover. I think it makes sense that we would be starting with the protagonist. Sorry, Sayhara. I also think it's interesting that they mentioned we won't be able to unlock all the islands automatically, and we'll basically need to get more rare characters to unlock everything. This gives me hope that there will be some type of like story continuity, since like I mentioned in one of my previous videos, the original Talent Development Plan didn't really have any kind of cohesive story whatsoever. It was all just kind of random scenes. From what I remember, there wasn't any specific areas that you really had to like unlock. So I'm hoping this means that there will be some kind of story continuity regarding like the islands and unlocking those. And that one of the reasons why they wanted to block them off and have you not go there immediately is because there is some kind of story that takes place over the course of all the different islands. But that's just my hopeful uh, deduction. The next part of the article is an interview with Danganronpa S's director, Shun Sasaki. One notable thing that was confirmed in this interview is that this is the first full Danganronpa game without Kadaka. Since Danganronpa is being directed by Shun Sasaki and written by Yuichiro Koizumi, Nami Tayama, and Satomi Hachimura, who handled the free time events and love suite events, in B3. So going through this, I'll be covering the questions that I found to be the most notable. Like I said before, I'll be linking the full translation in the description if you guys want to read the whole thing. So he starts out stating that they brought Danganronpa to Switch to celebrate the 10-year anniversary and to make it more accessible to both new and old players. He also states that the Switch ports of the game will come with the character sheet and free time event galleries added for the anniversary edition. They also touch on Ultra Despair Girls and if it'll eventually get a Switch port as well. He states that although it's highly compatible with the Switch's style, thanks to the handheld mode, they do not have any 
any plans at the moment of bringing it to Switch. He continued stating that's a game with quite delicate themes, so we worry we won't be allowed for a Switch release, but everything is possible with fan support, so we're counting on you. So yeah, there's no plans of Ultra Despair Girls coming to Switch at the moment, but it does seem like it is possible that it could eventually get ported to Switch if the sales for Danganronpa Decadence end up being really good. Next, they asked why they decided to include a board game along with the three numbered games for the Switch port, and they stated that it was because they wanted to release a game in time for the 10th anniversary. We considered many different ways to capture the festive feeling of this milestone and decided that evolving V3's bonus mode would be a great way to let the whole all-star cast of characters in Danganronpa's history share the spotlight. That's what led to the creation of Danganronpa S. Next, they asked how the characters on the box art was chosen. They said that since it was a trilogy pack, they wanted to select the protagonist of each game. And for the rest of them, they just kind of asked Kamatsuzaki to choose whoever he thought fit the composition best. And so they confirm here, why is Safumi Yamada so prominent on the box art? They confirm that yes, Safumi Yamada is the mastermind of Danganronpa S. It's a killing game. Hifumi Yamada was Junko all along. Everything you know is a lie. I'm just kidding. He did actually say that as a joke though. They said that the real reason was just that Kamatsuzaki wanted to put him there, which, which is honestly kind of what I assumed was likely the case. Next, they say that the other entries in the series have had secret meanings in their titles. Does Danganronpa S also have any hidden meanings? He replies saying that the S for Danganronpa S stands for special and that it does in fact have some other meanings, but that they will save that for another date. So this one is really interesting. I didn't really expect for it to stand for special and also implying the fact that there's other meanings definitely makes it seem like they're gonna pull some v3 <laughs> some v3 crap on us again i've seen some people suspect that they think the s is actually a five and that it stands for the fifth installment of danganronpa since if you count danganronpa one two ultra despair girls and v3 then this would be the fifth installment but that's the most likely theory that i've seen i'd be very interested to see what you guys have to say about that in the comments section he said that the hardest part of developing the game was figuring out how to upgrade the board game section because originally they said they were handling everything in 2d but didn't know how to make it surpass the original. And then when they upgraded everything to 3D, they said that they felt it fit better with the 8-bit sprites in the board game. And I agree, I think the board game looks really, really nice. It's a really big improvement from the talent development plan one, in my opinion. Later, they talk about what I mentioned before, which is that the writers who are handling the interactions for this game are the ones who did the free time events and night events in V3. They said that the scenario for this game is what if Hope's Peak never had any killing games? So basically, it's like an alternate universe. And then they stated that the writers value the characters' relationships in the main story and are keeping keeping their backgrounds unchanged, resulting in many enjoyable original scenes. I'm very glad to hear that they're keeping everybody's backgrounds unchanged. And I'm excited to see that this takes place in an alternate universe. It'll be kind of nice to see everybody interacting and getting to know each other in a setting with no killing at all, you know what I mean? Like finally there's a universe where Saimatsu isn't totally tragic and depressing. I'm very, very excited about that. He mentioned that his favorite interactions so far are the ones with Tagami and the ultimate imposter, which I am super duper excited to see. I bet those are hilarious. I bet it'll be especially funny to see Tagami reaction since he's so uh, uptight. And then finally, I want to talk about these last couple of questions where they ask, some fans are expecting a new numbered game in the Danganronpa series. Is that a possibility? And he says, no comments, and then laughs. So I feel like that heavily, heavily implies that there's a pretty good chance we'll be getting another main installment in the Danganronpa series. Because before when there was no plans, I mean, they said pretty openly that there was no plans. So yeah, I was super duper excited reading this part of the uh, article. And next, they ask him to leave a message for the fans and readers. And he says that Danganronpa was loved by a lot of people in its 10 year lifetime. And it's thanks to those fans being always with us that we were able to deliver you these switch ports. Danganronpa S is made half of our gratitude for all the years and half of our development team's selfish wish to have more fun with the Danganronpa cast. I'll be happy to see you all take this opportunity to immerse yourselves in the Dangan world one more time. Thank you very much for everything. Look forward to more Danganronpa in the future. Look forward to more Danganronpa in the future. Oh my God, this part made me so, so, so happy. I think it's actually pretty likely that we will be getting another main installment for the series now, especially with them saying that there is going to be more Danganronpa in the future. I feel like I've mentioned this like a million times now, but Kadaka did confirm the anniversary would last until November 25th, 2021, and the Japanese release date for this game is on November 4th for Japan, so I'm hoping that maybe sometime between the 4th to the 25th we'll get some type of teaser or announcement of some sort that a main installment is coming, but of course this is all just my speculation. I'm just being very hopeful Kamida is rubbing off on me. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section regarding that. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to let me know in the comments what you guys are most looking forward to about this game and whether or not you think that we will be getting a main installment for Danganronpa. I'd love to hear your opinions in the comment section and please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you did enjoy the video. It really does help me out a lot. And yeah, once again, thanks for watching the video and I will see you guys real soon.